Hello, welcome back to Gary Keep It Simple. Today I'm doing the uh, Toshiba PCG10, which is the one that you saw on the video that went um, slightly wrong the other week when I tried it, and the joys of vintage tech. So I thought I'd have a look and see where it went and what's wrong with it, and if there's anything I can do with it. This video has been recorded basically in real time. I've trimmed out the, the fluffy bits, but um, essentially you can see what happened and why and where I went from there. See how, see how we get on. Well, you can see from where it lives that it wasn't an easy job to get out and I didn't really fancy doing it. This is my Toshiba, it's a cassette deck model PCG10. And it's one that I got actually with the cabinet, which you've just seen the pictures of. And it's a metal capable deck. It is not high end, however, it was working. And it was quite nice. I never really got to try it out much because it was working and now I put a tape in it the other day and this happened now the trouble with that is of course I've got I've got a tape in the deck and I've got a deck that's not working so I thought good opportunity to take the top off find out what's wrong I've got it switched on and you can see there there, so that mechanism is working, which is the load and unload, but the main flywheel is not spinning, so that's that. But it's all coming off the same motor, so that has somehow seized. So, just out of interest, I'm going to just see if what happens if I G it along, and there we go. So it's now doing something. And it's rewinding tape nicely. So I can assume it's now going to work. Or can I? It auto stopped. Try fast forward. It's fast forwarding and it's pulling nicely on the tape. Spinning. This is interesting. Does that mean that that pulley is not? Hmm. So how is that happening? It's something different. Is there a clutch on there? It appears to be, I'm going to give it focus. I'm trying to get a shot of the pulley system there. It appears to be some sort of interlock. And uh, there, oh, there you go. You can see there the main flat belt drives the capstan. I would assume it's the capstan. Anyway, it drives the flywheel. And there seems to be something. Fully auto stop. Okay, so it has stopped, but it's not auto stopped. It's just stalled. Let's push the stop. Maybe that's how it all works. Because it didn't appear to be having any problems. All right. So I'm going to try and press play. Did I rewind it or I saw it? Let's pause. Okay, so these are the buttons on the front there. So if I try and press play now, see what happens. Nothing, because I think I'm at the end of the tape. Right, so if we stop, just rewind. Rewind won't work. So, so there is something wrong in there, but I don't know what at this point. So I shall have a fiddle. Well. I just um, moved it and it all went click and now it's doing that again so I don't know what's going on here it should be in stop mode all right so something is not right here some sort of linkage mechanism or belt I 
sort of linkage mechanism or belt, so I shall have to investigate a bit fully. Right, I managed to get the I managed to get the cassette out by forwarding the capstan flywheel. It is that is the capstan flywheel. So that is the important bit. Looking at that belt there you can see that it's not riding on the on the ball. It, it looks a bit like a bead and a v-groove on the same shaft. It should be on the ball but the belt is not slack particularly. Let's see if I can see it through the cone. Obviously the belt which is there is it's not goo and, but it's, it's, it's twangable. So I'm thinking that the surface is going to be a monkey. Give it a go. Try cleaning it up. Because everything else seems to be working. And those are the only two belts I can see. All the rest is mechanical linkage. And I really don't want to get involved in that if I don't have to. My view on these things is if you don't have to fiddle with them, don't. But if you do, I'll get stuck in. But remember, parts are hard to get hold of. Okay, good news. Well, I think it's good news. I've just using my Q-tip cotton bud as I'd call it. Just got that sort of grime off it and um, it, it's, it's now working. Let's just see if I can show you. If I power it on it goes through power on cycle. Two, three, hmm? nothing. Right, so it's doing nothing. If I now switch it on as in put it into play mode there we go it's quite happily moving the tape things and it's got a good drag on the on the flow and the but the the belt is nicely nicely in the middle of the raised bit clean the other belt as well that's all I've done and it's now doing its thing. And now it's stopped because it's got to the end of the tape. So I shall rewind the tape. They are soft touch clunky buttons. If that makes any sense. They're, um, they're the sort of buttons that move things and switches, but they're not what you'd call really soft touch. If, the, if the, they're sort of a seem to be a combination of levers and switches. Anyway, that's re rewinding right, rather nicely. So I shall um, let it finish that, just make sure it wants to go into play mode. As you can see, it says here metal, so I've got two metal decks. This one is interesting if you've seen my one about tape selectors. It hasn't got the auto select, so you've got Dolby noise reduction on and off. Tape selector normal, chrome and metal. Obviously it does both record and play back at the same time because there's only the one deck. But would it matter if I play a metal tape back in the chrome setting? No, because it's the same time constant, or it should be. And if I play it back in normal, well, of course it's going to self-destruct the deck, isn't it? No, it's not going to self-destruct the deck. It's just going to not quite sound the same as if I play it back in that position or that position but it's only important for recording. And apparently, I've looked it up, the record level, the bias level on metal tape is two and a half times, or 250% what it is on chrome. And chrome is 150% on what it is on normal. So uh, that's quite interesting, if you like figures. Anyway, let's just see if this works now. Yeah. And, and what I want to do though, just before we do that, is I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a, you've got a down in there, you got a phosphor bronze, phosphor bronze um, capstan bearing. Now, that could do with a little drop of oil, not WD-40, not contact cleaner. A little drop of oil of some kind, or possibly even grease, silicon grease, would do it. Just to 
just to take away a little bit of the rumble. So I shall apply a little bit of that because I've got some, and uh, well, then I'll put it back together. Right, so what I've done is I've got this silicon 15 instant lubricant, which shows pieces of gears and things, and I've sprayed it into the lid. You can see it's all shiny in there, and there's a paddle at the bottom. Q tip, which I've flattened the edge slightly. You can see it's got a shine on it, and I've dipped that in there, and then I've dipped, I've put it onto there. Now, on there, that's better. And I've dipped it onto there. Now, if you look at this, I just press the capstan flower from behind. You can see there is a certain amount of movement backwards and forwards. So that's good. That means that there is the ability to capillary action the lubricant up into the bearing, which is what I want to have happen. And on the back, there is just a Thing. So it's not actually meant to be rubbing on anything. I'm not going to fiddle with the back because I don't want to start taking things apart. So this is just a little bit of preventive maintenance. I don't see there is a problem, but now there's less of one. And now I'm just going to clean the capstan to make sure there's no leakage forwards. The good thing about the silicon is that it doesn't tend to spread once you've put it on. But for God's sake, don't spray it in there and hope it just hits the right bits because it's a hell of a job to get it off. Anyway. I'm going to do the cleaning up and we'll go from there. Unfortunately, when the belt dried off from the cleaning, it would not drive again. It's the fact that the flywheel is used as the main power source for moving the mechanism is the problem. It's a bit like an auto return turntable. When it gets to a certain point, it throws the teeth into the flywheel and they just pumps it over, but it can't do it with a belt that's slipping. If it was just driving the flywheel, there wouldn't have been a problem. But there we go. Anyway, so what I've had to do is I've had to order up some belts. I spent a long time trying to find belts and this is what I ended up with. And you'll see whether it's a success or not. Well, you probably can guess. But anyway, this is this is the story of how it happened and what I've had to do. A couple of days have passed and now I have had a delivery and uh, it's in this packet and it's a selection of belts. The reason I've got those is because I spent several hours on the internet trying to find belts specifically for this model. I'm not saying they don't exist, I'm just saying I couldn't find them. So anyway, I'm going to take the lid off and get back into it. I have subsequently found some belts from a Slovak company, but they work out at near enough 20 quid, including shipping, and uh, it's a long time shipping. Having got them, it's now time to try this out again. Now, my advice is, and I've always done this, before you do anything, make sure exactly what's wrong. So I'm going to switch it back on again and see, see what happens. And it's still making the noise. And that noise is because this pulley's going round and that one's not. So if I swing that, it then goes into a different mode. And that's the problem. Is that that pulley will not go around. Now it has. So that's what we've got to do is change that belt. I haven't worked out how to change that belt yet. Well, I shall have to give it some thought. See if I can find a manual for it. I couldn't find a manual for it, but I did see a YouTube video and I had a look at that, which was a bit of help, but not a lot. The chap on the YouTube video mentions changing the belt, says it's easy, but it's not actually, doesn't tell you how to do it. So I've had a look on the internet, can't see anything that's actually telling me how to do it. But chap did say there was only four screws involved. So I've taken out these red screws. These are the red screws. They appear to all be the same. There's so one there, one under there, which I haven't quite removed. There's one there and there's one there. And that would appear to allow the whole mechanism to come backwards. Make sure you've unplugged it from the mains before you do this, because you will hit the transformer. Okay, so I shall pull that out. So there's your little pile of screws, and there is the deck mechanism pulled out. Now to find out how to get, because the belt's got to go on here. Now I don't know if I'm going to be able to have to take this thing apart, which is not too many screws, or whether I'm going to be able to slip the belt in underneath the bearing. So I'll have a look and I'll let you know. When you're doing this, it's relatively easy. You remove some screws from there, 
there, there. It's just three, which will go over there. And then you have to lift the, the, the whole plate up. Be careful that the, the uh, flywheel bearing doesn't come out with it, because that will do. And then you've got this rather annoying little spring here. It's better, right? There's a little spring there. And it goes from that top plate to the bottom plate, and of course the belt goes around it. So you've got to take that off. Just a quick word of warning. I've got the spring off it, it's sort of came off on its own. It's just round little, little funny shaped end. Anyway, that's the belt. So now I've got to find one that's a similar size. This is the one I'm going to use. As you can see, it's within. That's the old one, and that's the new one. So if I do that, you can see it's within. Pretty good size. I don't want to overstress the bearing, so I don't want to put in a tight one. I just want one that's a little bit smaller than the original, which is what I've got there. Threading the belt back on, you've got to get that spring back on, and you can see there, down there, and that's where the screw, the spring has to hook onto. So I've done that. Now all I've got to do is get the belts over over the motor pulley. Like this here, there are three belts on this machine. There's the main capstan one, which I've just replaced. There's this one here, which is for the fast forward and rewind, apparently. And then there's another one on the other side of the deck, which is to do with the counter. I haven't bothered with them because they're working fine. And I don't really want to start mucking about with things too much. This has only just started to go wrong, so you know, it'll probably outlive me anyway. I find with belts and things it's worth making so something like this. This is a Q-tip shaft bent and used as a hook. You can see with the belt's actually on. It's a hell of a job to get that on there because when you're looking at this end, under there, you've got two belts going on that thing and it's very tight so it doesn't allow much room. So you have to have these, these two screws here loose to be able to get the belt on and to juggle it. But you can't actually get into there at all. And this, you have to be careful you don't lose that bearing. And this is just awkward. I mean, it, the whole thing is just fiddly. Plugged it in now, and this is really going to be the first switch on. I'm just going to make sure everything's okay. And uh, everything looks like it's in the right place, which it does. And switch it on. It hasn't gone bang. The front screen views is lit up so that's good let's try ejecting it that worked put tape in and press oh, let's try rewind and it's all worked yeah Rewind's working, counter's working. Seems to always do that. It did that before. It always gave a funny kick. Alright, that's got to the end. It doesn't auto stop in that respect. Let's play. And it's playing. And no doubt if I had something on the tape, you'd be able to hear it. That's just. Uh, what I've got to do though is I've got to just clean the belt now because. Having tucked it in, rather than remove everything, you're going to get grease on it. So I'm just going to do that. Is it playing back now? Peter's and Lee, sound pretty good. Got to talk over it, unfortunately, otherwise they'll get a copyright strike. It's playing. Peter's and Lee, we'll see what happens for the copyright. With the lovely sounds of Peters and Lee playing us out, that's the way to do it. And now, if you'd like to subscribe, hit like, do all that sort of thing, catch you another time. I'll be doing a proper test and review on this deck, now it's working properly, and we'll catch that as well. Cheers, bye bye.